This is Dr. Someshwar from Shield Healthcare. I hope everyone doing good. And I welcome you all on uh, to the menopause series by Dr. Payal Bhargav, a co-founder of uh, Divan Magic Foundation. Before starting the talk, let me take privilege to introduce Dr. Payal Bhargav Amman, who is a postgraduate diploma in ART from uh, in reproductive medicine from Kale, Germany. And she did her fellowship in infertility from IMA Hyderabad. And she is a life member of IMA, Menopause Society India and PCOS Society India. She is a member of Managing Committee of PCOS Society India and co-founder and director on board XPS Analytics Private Limited and consultant at uh, Sri Krishna Diagnostic Center and also consultant at Pranada Hospital, Hyderabad. And she is a co-founder for Divine Magic Foundation, a public health and awareness initiative working at gross root level and digitally through the, its YouTube channel. Now, without much further ado, let me turn over the time to Dr. Pal Bhagava to take over the session. Good evening all, and welcome to our fifth episode of Sailing Through Menopause. In the previous video, we discussed how exercise helps elderly to have a better quality of life. Today, we will be discussing about how to prevent a fall in elderly staying, staying with us in our house. We have seen and heard many elderly women have falling and having a fracture leading to bed sores and ultimately death. So today, we'll be discussing on how to prevent a fall in an elderly woman. Welcome for today's session. So today we'll be discussing about fall prevention and safety in elderly. We all know that aging brings an elevated risk of falls and serious injuries, as well as other adverse medical and psychosocial outcomes. Balance training and other forms of exercise should always be viewed within the context of a multifactorial approach that is tailored to address the deficits and risk factors that apply specifically to the individual. Wherever appropriate, other intervention options, example, treatment of medical conditions, changes in the medication regime, changes in footwear, prescription of sensory aids or assistive devices, environmental, environmental modification, hip pads, emergency response systems, should be explored in tandem with an exercise program. So let's define what a fall is. A fall is an event which results in a person coming to rest inadvertently on the ground or floor or other lower level. Each year, one out of three adults aged 65 and older falls according to the CDC. Falls are equally common between men and women, but more likely to result in injury in women. So why are we discussing this topic today? A fall leads to restriction in daily activities, loss of independence and autonomy. It leads to pain and suffering, hip fractures, traumatic brain injuries, upper limb injuries, trauma, fear of falling, loss of confidence in an older woman, and ultimately it may lead to death. A fall leads to physical injury and physical impairment. It leads to more of hospital admissions and health insurance cost, financial and medical cost and medical efforts for fall treatment loss of independence for mobility, moved into residential care center. Psychologically, the fear of further falls, distress and embarrassment harms a person. So let's see what are the potential high risk populations which can lead to fall. Older age of a woman, those living alone, 
the women who have previous history of falls, those with disabilities, gait problems, walking aid use, those who are suffering from dementia, depression, history of stroke, Parkinson's disease, dizziness and vertigo, urinary incontinence, diabetes, hospitalized nursing home residents, and multiple medication regimes. So all these women are more likely to have a fall. Now the fall has multiple reasons. It can be environmental cause, person as an individual, certain activities which lead to fall. So let's discuss here personal risk factors. As stated earlier, age is a major risk factor for fall. The risk for a fall increases with age. Normal aging affects our eyesight, our balance, strength, and ability to quickly react to our environment. Lack of exercise leads to decreased balance, coordination, and bone and muscle strength. Excessive alcohol intake, smoking, decreases bone strength. Alcohol use can also cause unsteadiness and low reaction times. A poor diet and not getting enough water will deplete strength and energy and can make it hard to move on and do everyday activities. There are multiple risk factors at home, which we should take care of if we have an elderly person in our family. So as stated earlier, patients with one fall have a three to four risk of another fall within six months. Now falls are usually multifactorial. Frail elderly people often develop low BP or hypotension during common everyday situations. Posture change, medications, dehydration will all lead to low BP, which may reduce brain blood flow, causing dizziness, falls or fainting. Now, reducing the risk of hypotension may help prevent injuries, emergency visits, and hospitalizations related to falls. So we have a beautiful diagram here depicting how to prevent falls, at least in 30% of people. Make your home a safer place. Install handrails on staircases. Pick up clothes lying on the floor or here and there in the house. Clear away loose cords, use non-slip mats in shower, add more lightning, declutter your kitchen, check prescription and the side effects of the medication taken by the elderly, get regular eye checkup done for the elderly lady in the house, make her exercise regularly, wear shoes with traction and improve her diet. So let's discuss the prevention of fall in a little bit more detail. Since most falls occur at home, let us examine some simple precautions to take to make things safer at homes. For the flooring, check for loose rugs, runners, and mats. Be aware of uncarpeted slippery areas. Avoid waxing flows and clean up spills as soon as they occur. Look for obstacles such as electrical cords and other small objects that might present as hazard. Also check carpet edges and any area where there's a sudden change in ground surfaces. Example from tile to carpet. The other thing we should be very careful for if there's an elderly in the house is the stairways. Do the handrails run the entire length of the stairs Check if they are sturdy and well attached. Is the area well lit with a switch at both top and bottom of the stairs? Are any steps uneven or in need of repair? Consider the use of tightly woven carpet here or non-skid treads. For the bathrooms, make sure that there are grab bars in the shower and tub and non-skid mats. Check also for poor lighting and consider a night light. Many falls occur at night when an urge to use the bathroom sends us running. Consider keeping a flashlight beside your bed.
For the kitchens, avoid placing frequently used items in hard to reach areas or areas where they have to bend over. Better to place items within easy reach. A little bit about the exercise again. General exercise reduces the risk of falls and that exercise programs that include balance components are most effective. Exercise interventions can be grouped into six categories, gait and balance training, strength training, flexibility, movement such as Tai Chi, general physical activity and endurance. Coming to the medications, most of the elderly are on multiple medications. Some may be getting sedatives, antidepressants and antipsychotics. All these contribute to fall by reducing mental alertness, worsening balance and gait and causing drops in systolic blood pressure while standing. Additionally, people taking multiple medications are at a greater risk of falling. Now we all know due to COVID conditions, how vitamin D supplementation is very essential. The older patients in our house may be given vitamin D supplements for fall prevention, which can be given daily, weekly, or monthly with a dose adjusted upward to achieve the dosing equivalence for at least 800 units daily. Men and women who are over 65 years of age with low serum vitamin D levels of a concentration less than 10 are at a greater risk for loss of muscle mass, strength, and hip fractures. So vitamin D supplementation is very essential for all elderly. So to conclude my talk, identify risk factors, implement an individual risk assessment and interventions. Avoid placing frequently used items in hard to reach areas or areas where they have to bend over. Better to place items within easy reach. Avoid climbing if possible, but if it is a must, make sure the step stool is stable with the handrail and wide steps. Keep all rooms free from clutter, especially the floors. Check the condition of shoes and avoid loose fitting items such as sandals and slippers, high heels, shoes with excessive cushioning and stocking feet. Make sure eyeglasses are properly fitted and of the correct prescription. These simple measures can make a world of difference in helping to avoid accidents and falls. Thank you so much for your patient listening. Our next topic on the menopause will be bone health and prevention of osteoporosis. Thank you so much.